And two years later, she developed an invasive ductal carcinoma, which is cancer, that we now know is directly linked to breast implants. And unfortunately, that cancer did kill her. But she did not die for nothing because before passing away, this lady, the saint that she is, knew her breast implants were why she was dying. So she agreed to donate her body to further investigate the science of silicone implant incompatibility syndrome, or CIS, which is one of the many names given to breast implant illness over the 60 years breast implants have been on the market. This podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and is not intended to substitute or replace the advice of a licensed medical professional. Hey girl, my name is Cheyenne Burnett and I am a lover of French fashion, Italian food, and art of all kinds. I am wildly in love with my ride or die Brad and we have the coolest kids. Oh, and my breast implants tried to kill me. I went from having all of the cutout photos on my goal board coming true to hanging by a thread, a sea of depression riddled chronic illness symptoms medical specialists couldn't ever give me answers for. Because what I was suffering from, too many doctors and surgeons today are still claiming isn't even real. I was suffering from breast implant illness. And since you're here with me right now, you're probably wondering if you are too. So think of this as your one-stop shop for a true crime style happy hour with a less boobed bestie, that's me, mixed with the real information that can actually help you. So get cozy and get ready because you're about to question everything you currently believe about women's health and about beauty because this is the Explant Secrets Podcast. Girl, the fact that you are here with me right now means you've come face to face with the fact that to this day, there has never been a single study or clinical trial that proves breast implants won't hurt you. And the people that make them are literally quoted on internal documents calling breast implants profoundly toxic. So just in case you didn't know, the fact that you are listening to me right now, even though it's scary as hell, and even though you might not love what you hear, you're a fucking warrior. And I am so, so proud of you. Now, up until this point, in the Explant Secrets podcast, we've covered a lot about what studies were not done. So I want to switch gears in this episode a little bit and share with you what research did find. Because as jaw-dropping as the history behind how we got here is, the purpose of this podcast is to help you right now. <laughs> so I want to share with you what I found in an article published by Dr. Henry Dijkman in the Department of Pathology for a University in the Netherlands in 2016. I will put the link to the article in the show notes so that you can see it for yourself. But in this report, he discusses the results of tests done on a patient who received breast implants in 1985. So nine years after the FDA started monitoring medical devices and seven years before the first ban on silicone breast implants happened. Okay, so this woman gets her breast implants put in in 1985. And in 1997, her doctor reports that she had developed adverse reactions to her implants. But what he didn't do was document exactly what those reactions were. Failure number one. Fast forward to 2001, after multiple complications, she was convinced by her plastic surgeon to remove the implants and replace them with new ones, in which she quickly developed a capsular contracture that also had to be corrected, which means removal and replace. 
failure number two. And three. (laughs) And for clarity's sake, just so I make sure that we are 100% on the same page here. A capsule is what they call the scar tissue that forms around your breast implant after it's put in. This happens to all of us, regardless of if you have silicone-filled implants or saline ones, or if the implant is placed above or behind the muscle, because what's happening is your body is literally going, oh shit, (laughs) I have a massive foreign object inside of me that isn't supposed to be there. And in an effort to protect your vital organs from exposure, your body creates a literal wall of tissue around the implant. So think of it like an orange, a really toxic, moldy, potentially cancer-causing orange. (laughs) The orange itself would be the implant and the peel would be the capsule. Okay, now a capsular contracture is when that capsule tissue your body's put around the implant to try to protect you hardens and tightens, which causes it to squeeze your implant. And if you Google it right now, you will find that the cause of this is believed to be an excessive fibrotic foreign body reaction to the implant. Meaning your body knows this is super dangerous and it is not supposed to be there. And your immune system is freaking out that it is. And though many plastic surgeons treat this like it's no big deal, it's actually a really serious complication because once started, a capsular contracture does not go away on its own and it greatly increases the risk of your breast implants rupturing or leaking. Now we know that the contents of the breast implants make their way out of the silicone shell into our bodies regardless of rupture or leakage through gel bleed. But do you remember back in episode two when we talked about doctors in Japan injecting women with silicone directly and how it destroyed their tissue and made them extremely sick? It did so much damage to so many women in such a short amount of time that they banned it as quickly as they could and doctors were not allowed to do it as a procedure. That same exact stuff is what is in the silicone breast implants today. So if you have a leak or a rupture, that damage to your body is going to be very similar to those women almost 80 years ago who suffered from silicone poisoning from it being directly injected instead of put in a bag first. Now, I also want to be very clear that if you have saline implants, that does not mean you're safe. Yes, saline implants contain salt water as the internal filling, but they also contain between 40 and 80 different chemicals and heavy metals in that salt water that if leaked into your body are quickly absorbed into your bloodstream. And both saline and silicone breast implants have the ability to grow mold inside of them, which can make you deathly sick. Trust me, I know. Now, today, we have several different popular brands of breast implants circulating, made by different manufacturers using different combinations of chemicals and heavy metals. So if you're interested in finding out exactly what your breast implants are made of, I wrote a blog that I will link you to in today's show notes, where I actually hunted down the long list of chemicals and heavy metals that are used in making or contained inside the current FDA-approved breast implants from different popular manufacturers such as Allergan, Mentor, Ideal, and Centra. These lists come directly from the manufacturers and the FDA's safety and effectiveness data sheets, which the blog links to as well, so you can see it right from the source yourself. So circling back now to our sweet friend in 2001, after multiple complications, she was convinced by her plastic surgeon to remove the implants and replace them with new ones, and shortly after that, developed a capsular contracture. At this point, it was documented by her doctor that she was complaining of pain and burning in her breasts, swollen lymph nodes in her armpit, and she was also experiencing severe memory issues problems walking, she was unable to sleep, had significant bowel function issues, and even skin rashes, and then also began to experience sudden numbness in her legs. These symptoms ringing a bell to anyone? Because they sure did for me. So in 2002, both of her one-year-old implants were removed. 
Just one year later, she went back under the knife because a reaction to silicone particles was causing massive swelling in the lymph nodes in her armpits. So they removed those two. Her lymph nodes, not her armpits. (laughs) Two weeks later, the same thing happened to the lymph nodes in her groin, though. And two years later, she developed an invasive ductal carcinoma, which is cancer that we now know is directly linked to breast implants. And unfortunately, that cancer did kill her. But she did not die for nothing because before passing away, this lady, the saint that she is, knew her breast implants were why she was dying. So she agreed to donate her body to further investigate the science of silicone implant incompatibility syndrome, or CIS, which is one of the many names given to breast implant illness over the 60 plus years breast implants have been on the market. And because of that, during autopsy, tissue samples of multiple organs, including her heart, lungs, liver, digestive system, brain, and spinal cord were collected that later confirmed silicone had in fact made its way throughout her entire body. Okay, I know that was just a really heavy way to start our time together today, but it is so important that you understand how serious this illness can really be and why taking the steps necessary to heal quickly is so important. But I also want to remind you that I am sitting here in front of you right now, having suffered severely from breast implant illness myself for more than 10 years. And today, I am healthier than ever. So we can come back from this. But if you're feeling really scared right now, That's okay. Being scared is the perfect thing to feel when it comes to breast implant illness. If you are feeling angry right now, man, do I get that. And being angry is also the perfect thing to feel right now. Just please don't be angry with yourself because you didn't do this. They did. You didn't make yourself sick. The plastic surgery industry did. You didn't force this illness on the people you love. The manufacturers and the doctors who lied to you about the safety of their products did. What you did was find the courage to trust that inner voice that says something is really wrong. What you did was decide your health and your life are important enough to fight for. And that is exactly what we are going to do together. We are going to fight. So buckle up, buttercup, because it is only getting better from here. Knock, knock. Hello. Hey, girl, this isn't a blooper. I just wanted to let you know that In the very unlikely event that the information I shared with you today didn't do it for you, and you feel like, you know what, I really need more proof that breast implants are dangerous, I have listed several links in today's show notes that support the fact that breast implant illness is very real and breast implants are deadly. So if you're interested, go through those, and I will see you in the next episode. Hey girl, so I'm over here giving you a massive virtual hug. Unless of course you don't like hugs, then it's a crisp high five. (laughs) Because you just finished listening to this episode of the Explant Secrets podcast. Did that just go by way too fast for anyone else? (laughs) If you want more, head over to explantsecrets.com because under podcast, you'll find a full breakdown of today's episode, show notes, sponsor discount codes, and a bunch of free stuff that I've built just for you. And if you're looking for a new crew of some seriously inspiring women who've been there, maybe to bounce your questions off of, or just gain some much needed support, check out my free Explant Secrets Facebook group. You can find the link in today's show notes. 
Okay, you expat rebel you. As we part ways for now, keep these words close to your heart. You are worthy. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of health. And you are worthy of living life to its fullest. Never forget that you have the power to reclaim your story and redefine your own definition of beautiful. So until next time, please be kind to yourself and don't be afraid to stay just a little bit rebellious. <laughs> See you soon.